Yellow. Welcome back. In this video, we are going to continue our coverage of our Pyromancer build. We are going to focus on high tier weaponry and gear modifications that you can keep an eye out for to improve your build. You don't need to follow the meta YouTube builds. You can have a lot of fun in this game, even at high challenge tiers with your very own build that you've created. I just would keep an eye on for certain of these mods as they make life a lot easier. I did want to ask, what have you been running? I'm genuinely curious as to what builds you have found have been working. I have been living in the challenge tiers 13 and 14, farming those golds out so I can get better gear and try different builds. I hate meta builds. I hate all things meta. I want to do my own thing. I guess I'm a hipster. That's fine. I'm wearing a fedora right now. What have you been doing? Has it been working? How far have you gotten? And if your build has gotten you through challenge tier 15, I'd love to see it. This build focuses on armor piercing, status effect damage, anomaly power, and skill leech in order to get health back. This build is specced almost entirely into the Tempest skill tree. The skills I ran for a very long time were Volcanic Rounds, Thermal Bomb, and Feed the Flames. I had a lot of fun, even more so fun than the Volcanic Rounds, running Double Eruption. The cooldown with the Tempest tree fully specced out was roughly 20-ish seconds, about the same as Volcanic Rounds, but the Alpha Strike potential with double erupting a big boss enemy or a cluster of enemies was absolutely massive and I really think this is the most fun build in the game. Double Eruption plus Feed the Flames to Heal Yourself plus Thermal Bombs. Everything that gets hit and caught on fire blows the f up. I will say that Volcanic Rounds, again, are pretty hard to replace, especially when you're trying to deal with heavily armored enemies like Captains. Those Volcanic Rounds with their Ignore Armor and Passing Through Targets are incredibly powerful. For weaponry, I cannot recommend the Tier 3 mod Ultimate Storm Whip enough. It is incredibly powerful, and once you put it on, it's going to be very hard to take off. That's going to come from the legendary weapon Thunderbird, which is an assault rifle, very strong. That weapon also comes with the mod Stream which 30% of critical damage is returned to you as health. I have utilized this for a very long time. It is incredibly helpful for getting off that emergency healing. Just aim for the head and fix your body. I also recommend the tier two mod Death Chains, potent in damage. Big fan of anomaly enhancement. There's a natural anomaly enhancement joke in there somewhere. That's why I like having such a high anomaly power. This mod provides a 30% boost to your firepower based on your anomaly power. If you got big anomaly power, you got big firepower to match. The tactical variant of assault rifles has become my absolute favorite weapon in this game. This type of assault rifle can be modified through the Zahidi Scientist weapon upgrading. The reason I prefer this variant, it's got the highest damage of the assault rifle variants. It's got great accuracy, it's got a great reload speed, and it's got great rounds per minute. A mediocre clip size, that's a small trade-off. On our weapon, we want to make sure we have armor piercing for when our volcanic rounds are on cooldown or if we're running eruption. This makes it so that we can penetrate those captains and armored enemies much easier. This also will provide a bonus when we run our armor mod known as no resistance against the fortified. This will increase your resistance piercing by 50% of your armor piercing. That's a big buff for the pyromancer. It's really nice to make sure you can pierce those enemy resistances. I would highly recommend to find the mod bullet kindling. Enemies take 20% more damage when they are on fire. When you spray your volcanic rounds, it is nice to have the mod twice as hot. This simply means every time you cast a skill, anything that's on fire takes a huge amount of free damage. I'm a really big fan of the tier two mod, Stand Tall. You receive a massive buff to your anomaly power and your firepower when you've been outside of cover for more than five seconds. Five seconds outside of cover is really easy to do. You don't always need to hit the take cover button and get into physical cover. A lot of times I find myself focusing on simply breaking line of sight instead of actually taking cover. Another mod I like is Rejuvenation and that's receive buffs to anomaly power, fire power, and armor for eight seconds whenever you fully replenish your health. Handy buff to have that pretty much works as a passive bonus. The cooldown's 10 seconds so there's only about two seconds between activation and finishing where it's not actually active. Because getting to the high tiers requires to eat a lot of damage, I thoroughly recommend putting some points into armor. You can get away with running a pure glass cannon up until, like I said, tier challenge tier 12, but after that it becomes very difficult to have nothing to block damage, particularly for solo players, which is why I pretty much always run damage absorber. This tier 2 mod makes it so that you have a very large buff to your armor value. For my character, that boils down to about 45,000 bonus armor 
And here's the kicker, which is most important. You also need to pay attention to your resistances and this mod will provide you with 10% buff to your resistances. That applies to toxic, fire, you want resistances against those elements. My favorite defensive mod for the Pyromancer, protection of the flames. This is an armor mod for the Pyromancer tier two which will provide you with a very substantial armor and resistance buff each time you get a kill with a gun on enemies marked by Pyromancer skills, adding 10% resistance each time you get a kill with your gun and a substantial amount of armor each time you get a kill with your gun. This effect stacks up to three times. Super helpful, I can't recommend this enough. Keep your ass alive. You have a lot of room to play with now that you should have mostly purple and legendary gear. Each gear has two slots, you can mod one slot on each piece of gear. As soon as you mod that slot, the other slot is locked in and you cannot change it. Some of my favorite tier one mods are increasing the range of Feed the Flames, increasing the radius of Thermal Bomb, increasing the duration of time you have to confirm Thermal Bomb kills before they detonate. If you like running something where you can replenish your volcanic round ammunition, I would recommend running Feed the Flame, damages an additional target. This in combination with Feed the Flame restores 33% of ammunition, means that you will restore 66% of your magazine for each feed the flame cast very helpful for keeping that volcanic rounds stocked up in your gun if that is the way you so choose to play for eruption i personally found that the double charge was enough if you spec out through the tempest tree the eruption attack is so powerful the only buff i would say you need is going to be getting another charge so i would make sure that you pay a lot of attention to defensive slash staying alive mods on your gear as much fun it is in the early game to run around as a pure glass cannon towards the later stages of the game it's almost impossible you need to make sure you have some sustain damage absorber and protection of the flames are my two favorite pieces when you start getting that sweet sweet high tier loot each armor piece is going to have three slots for attributes obviously every single piece of gear i run for armor is going to have plus anomaly power more anomaly power more skill damage for the second slot we need to focus on plus status power and this is because we want to inflict maximum burn damage and maximum dot this makes it a lot easier for a thermal bomb to confirm kills and create detonations and obviously volcanic rounds inflict burn, more burn damage, more volcanic round damage. For your third slot on your attributes for armor, you can either go with skill leech, which is health stolen from successful hits with your skills, or cooldown reduction. Personally, I run a nice combination of both. For my solo players, I cannot recommend having gear with the attribute close range damage. When you're alone, everything gets right on top of you. Buff that close range damage. Close range damage is up to 10 meters away. If you like running long range damage because you're playing with your friends, just know that range is 18 meters so there is eight meters of dead zone where neither of the buffs are taking place thanks so much for sticking around to the end of this video i hope you enjoyed it if you did drop a sub trying to grow this channel we broke 200 subs let's go thank you everybody who subbed that's pretty badass of you i do weekly outriders content big shout out to my boy mvp aka hustle appreciate all the information you sweaty no life try hard thanks a lot we out